Hello friends, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. I welcome you all in this video where we are going to cover the current affairs of 4th October as well as 5th October. Yes, because uh, yesterday there was no video, therefore I have come up with the current affairs of yesterday as well as today. Now, we have talked about the introduction. Let me wish you a very, very happy Dashera and may this Dashera bring happiness to all of you and I hope that all of you try to eliminate the bad habits or the, uh, I would say, the ill feelings that you have towards your companions, towards your enemies, whatever the ill feelings that you have, the thus sir that we have in our minds and those thus sir in the present times are usually filled with negativities. So I hope you all get rid of your negativities on this Dashera and that would be a true Dashera for all of us, okay? So on that note, let's begin the current affairs video, but I would really, really recommend all of you to try to get rid of the negativities that is there in your mind, be it the procrastination, be it the jealousy, uh, be it any kind of harmful emotion, it is very necessary for you to move on in the life, okay? Now on that note, let's move ahead. Here is the timetable of our live courses and this is our mobile application. In case you are seeking any kind of guidance from us, you can call us, you can mail us and uh, you can also search our website for more information about us, okay? So here we have the first question. I hope all of you are ready to uh, learn something new in this video because that would again be a very positive step towards eliminating the procrastination from you, towards eliminating the darkness of, uh, you can say, ignorance, okay? So let's begin. The first question is, which of the following statements is are correct about the UBA 2.0 scheme? So here you have the three statements. Uh, the theme of the UBA 2.0 scheme is the democracy. The scheme aims to mentor writers who are 40 years of age. The National Book Trust is the implementing agency of this scheme, uh, both A and B, both B, uh, both A and C. So which one is the right answer? The right answer is option A both A and C because the scheme aims to mentor writers who are 30 years of age, okay? So 30 or below 30, that's the criteria for getting uh, enrolled in the UVA scheme. Now, what is this UVA scheme? First of all, UVA in itself means young. Now, it also has a full form, young and uh, upcoming versatile authors. This is the theme of, uh, this is the full form of UVA scheme. Now, the age limit of your scheme is 30 and the purpose is to train the writers so that we can create books, we can create literature that will help us in rebuilding our image in the global sphere. That's the idea of this scheme. Then we have the theme. What is the theme of this UR 2.0 scheme? It is democracy. So, all the literature which will be produced under the UR 2.0, that will be centered on the theme of democracy. That's the basic idea. Then it is the part of India at 75 project that is your Amrit card. Okay, by 2047, India will be achieving its 100 years of independence and there is a vision uh, that the government is aiming to achieve in the 25 years to go. Okay, so that is, uh, that is all about it. Now let's move ahead. So here... The implementing agency of this scheme, as you have read in the question itself, it is National Book Trust. Now, not only this National Book Trust will mentor the writers, it will publish their works, but it will also undertake the work of translation of books in different Indian languages so that the other people can also read it. The people who do not know Hindi or English, the, they also can read the books and this will definitely help us in strengthening our cultural ties, our state to state ties and it will be a step in the Ek Bharat Shresht Bharat scheme, okay? So the translation will be undertaken under this Ek Bharat Shresht Bharat scheme or whatever you want to say it uh, in order to strengthen this initiative, the translation will be done. So that is all about the UBA scheme and the purpose of presenting the entire news in the form of these blogs is uh, that you can remember these blogs better, okay? 
so try to look at the ppt again and again because these blocks will be inscribed in your memory if you look at them four to five times and then it will be easier for you to recall the facts later okay the next question is which state has launched the mahatma gandhi rural industrial parks scheme to develop godhans the uh, which the, which are the cow shelters as rural industrial parks for livelihood generation so here guys chhattisgarh is the right answer whenever you come across the word godhan you just have to mark chhattisgarh obviously you have to read the question carefully okay i'm not saying just skip the question godhan padha iska matlab ye nahi hai that you blindly take Ch uh, chhattisgarh first read the question carefully i'm just saying that godhan related every kind of scheme is being run by the government of chhattisgarh now what is this scheme which we are talking about so it is guys mahatma gandhi rural industrial parks scheme now what is the basic purpose the purpose is to convert the godhans into rural industrial parks now what is the government planning to do exactly transforming the cow shelters into the rural industrial parks so will the cows be evacuated from the uh, cow shelters and these cow shelters will be turned into manufacturing units is this your question so guys no nothing like that is like that is going to happen in chatisgarh basically the rural employment will be generated generated in and around the cow shelters okay so uh, you can understand it in this manner like dairy industry will be created then the uh, the animal husbandry industry will be uh, the jobs in the animal husbandry and dairy industry will be created with the help of these cow shelters and in turn they will be rural industrial uh, parks basically they will offer employment so that is the basic idea of converting these cow shelters into rural industrial parks so that they can offer more and more employment opportunities to the rural dwellers now related to cows we have two more schemes in the state only okay one scheme is for the setting up of the cow, godhans the cow shelters and another scheme is to buy the cow dung from these godhans at a certain price okay so we have three schemes from the same state related to the cows first is this mahatma gandhi mg narega industrial parks okay the full form is mahatma gandhi rural industrial parks not the mg narega parks sorry so mahatma gandhi rural industrial parks is there under which the godhans will be converted into the rural industrial parks another one is this suraj ji gaon yojana under which the cow shelters are established the godhans are established and then we have godhan nyay yojana under which the cow dung is purchased at rupees 2 per kg so these are the three schemes from the same state if you are uh, not able to remember these amounts like 8000 godhans opened rupees 2 per kg cow dung is purchased so you don't have to remember the numeric digits what you can do is you can remember the name of the scheme the state as well as the purpose of the scheme okay that would suffice your preparation as far as these schemes are concerned now coming to the third question with which country has india signed a wide shipping pact so it is guys new zealand okay so indian navy has signed a wide shipping pact with new zealand's navy now what is this white shipping pact now guys white shipping pact is basically the information sharing agreement under which the indian navy and the new zealand navy they both will share the information related to the non military ships so non military ships are the trading ships okay the cargo ships so information related to those ships or the fishing vessels they this kind of information will be uh, exchanged between india and new zealand so that they can monitor the indo pacific region in a better better map so that is that okay so nothing much is there i hope you can remember it that white shipping information exchange is basically the exchange of information related to the non military shipping okay between two countries and the two countries are right in front of you moving ahead who has uh, who was awarded the 2022 nobel prize in medicine so here uh, swante pebo is the right answer option a is the right answer so he is guys swante pebo 
and can any one of you identify the flag which country does he belong to if the answer is yes then do mention it in the comment section below if you are not able to identify the flag then search about this person what is his nationality this is my question from all of you now coming back to this news why has he been given this nobel prize so he has been given the nobel prize for his extraordinary work and this work is in itself very extraordinary so before this news article i myself did not know that we homo sapiens share the dna traits with our extinct relatives like the extinct human species neanderthals and denisovans okay so these were the it's these are the extinct species in the homo genus itself and we share the dna uh, you can say that some of the dna traits with these species and this is his research okay and for that he has been given the nobel prize now you must be wondering do we need to remember the reason as well now guys my answer is yes sometimes in the examination the reasons are also asked for which a certain person has got the nobel prize okay so reason remember is important aapko karna padega yaar okay now coming to his present occupation so he is the director at max planck institute for evolutionary anthropology in germany okay so this is also an important fact if you have any examination coming up if you are a student of sbi po ibps or any other examination then this is a fact that you must remember and if you are aiming at rbi sabinabad examination of the next year then this fact you can skip because by the next year this would become irrelevant for the examiner to ask okay so the person his country the reason and the category in which the person has got the award that would suffice your preparation okay so now we have the fifth question who is the author of india's Pakistan conundrum managing a complex relationship book so here guys sharat sabarwal is the right answer okay so he is sharat sabarwal and uh, if anyone uh, of you know that which newspaper makes this kind of infographic of the writers then you have guessed the person he is a journalist from the indian express and he has written this book india's pakistan conundrum managing a complex relationship uh, if any one of you is interested in politics or international relation then you must give a read to this book this is uh, this seems to be very interesting now you have time so you can expand your horizons and try to learn new things so that whenever you come across any current affairs related to the land border tensions or anything related to the politics you are in a better position to assess the situation and make your own opinions or judgments about it okay now coming to the next question now from here onwards the questions belong to the previous day okay october 4 ke questions hai yahan ke baad okay so you will get the content related to these news obviously in the pdf but if you are searching for a more detailed content on the website then you have to go to the current affairs of october 4th in order to get the details of these news however the details i have mentioned here as well now coming to the question so which state has performed best in the swachhta hi seva 2022 camp so guys swach sarvekshan results are out and as a part of those results this swachhta hi seva campaign was also announced okay the results for this campaign has also have also been announced so here karnataka guys is the best performing state now since these are the swach sarvekshan results so every kind of category would surround uh, would revolve around the cleanliness only so this is also a cleanliness campaign that was run okay so in this campaign karnataka state has performed the best now from here onwards i'm going to tell you the rankings only because nothing much is there that we need to discuss it's only the rankings which have uh, which have been released okay so let's discuss the ranking uh, we are on a ranking spree now okay so firstly swachh sarvekshan urban 2022 results and the swachh sarvekshan urban has been released by ministry of housing and urban affairs whereas the swachh sarvekshan uh, 
ग्रामीण इज इज कंडक्टेड बाय द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ जल शक्ति वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द रिजल्ट्स ऑफ दैट इज वेल बट फर्स्ट लुक एट द रैंकिंग्स ऑफ द अर्बन सो नेशनल रैंकिंग इन द नेशनल कैटेगरी नेशन वाइड व्हिच इज द बेस्ट सिटी सो सिटीज विद 1 टू 10 लाख पॉपुलेशन हियर वी हैव तिरुपति एट द फर्स्ट पोजीशन डोंट लुक एट दीस रैंक्स बिकॉज़ दीस आर नॉट द यू कैन से these rankings would not be counted because hashtag zero is not a ranking it is just given as an annexure to the ranking the ranking begins from tirupati onwards okay so tirupati is the one is the number one city in the category of cities with 1 to 10 lakh population whereas if we talk about the cities with more than 10 lakh population then as always indore has ensconced its place indore is at number one in the entire nations so it is the cleanest city of india so then we have surat navi mumbai gvmc visakhapatnam and vijayawada these are the top 5 cities and in my opinion these five cities uh, you can easily remember you need to remember these five cities these are important moving ahead then we have the states ranking okay so in the states the states with less than 100 urban local, local bodies for them uh, tripura jharkhand uttarakhand himachal pradesh and haryana are the top 5 states okay if we talk about the states with more than 100 urban local bodies then madhya pradesh chatisgarh maharashtra telangana and punjab are the top 5 rankers now the question is whether you have to remember all these rankings or not so in my opinion top 3 to at least you need to remember okay and if you belong to any of these states then obviously it's a must for you to remember the score as well okay otherwise you have to remember the score of the top one only okay that would suffice in my opinion okay then we have the ganga towns the towns which are located on the banks of ganga or in the base population less than 1 lakh so here we have uttar pradesh uh, at the first position so town is bijnor and the score is 80 then again we have uttar pradesh kanauj then uttar pradesh uh, gadh mukteshwar this is another town now here also you don't have to remember all the five just try to remember the top one ganga town in population less than 1 lakh then we have the population with more than 1 lakh population so here uttarakhand haridwar is at the first position that is all and at the max if you want to remember you can remember uttar pradesh varanasi is at the second position if you want to remember the scores then scores of only the toppers should be remembered by you okay no one is willing to ask the second ranker it is only the toppers which everyone asks for okay coming back to the news cantonment boards the first is dioli cat and this much is enough that apart from this don't look at any other ranks now we have the prerak dor samman the category ranking okay so we had the swachh sarvekshan urban rankings as we have discussed now now a new category was introduced by the government and that ranking was prerak dor samman category okay so in this category we have five sub categories under which the rankings are given so first category is platinum which is divya in hindi so divya me we have madhya pradesh district is indore and urban local bodies also indore okay then gujarat se surat surat then maharashtra se thane and here we have navi mumbai okay so for the two of these madhya pradesh and gujarat we have the same district as well as urban local body which has got the first rank which has got the top rank for gujarat it is the second top list for Mad for maharashtra thane is the district whereas navi mumbai is the urban local body and this makes it easier for you to remember it as well okay now here in platinum category all these three are important try to remember it and now you have a lot of time to uh, memorize it. Okay, and as far as your NABARD ESI paper is concerned, phase two. So, guys, this is important. Such subjection can be asked. So, try to remember that. Now, we have the gold. That is Anupam category within the Prerak Dor Samman category. So, here Uttar Pradesh Gautam Buddh Nagar is at the 
टॉप मोस्ट पोजिशन सो दिस इज द डिस्ट्रिक्ट एंड एज फार एज अर्बन लोकल बॉडी इज कंसर्न नोएडा इज एट दिस टॉप मोस्ट पोजिशन देन वी हैव सिल्वर कैटेगरी कर्नाटका मैसूर मैसूर ब्रॉन्स दैट इज उदित कैटेगरी मध्य प्रदेश खांडवा खांडवा ओके फॉर मेजोरिटी ऑफ द स्टेट डिस्ट्रिक्ट एंड अर्बन लोकल बॉडी इज सेम वेर एज देर आर सर्टन स्टेट फॉर विच द डिस्ट्रिक्ट एंड दर्बन लोकल बॉडी इज डिफरेंट सो बेसिकली द डिस्ट्रिक्ट इज अ बिगर यूनिट एंड इन दैट डिस्ट्रिक्ट देर इज अ सर्टन अर्बन लोकल बॉडी विच हैज बिन रिकोगनाइज फॉर इट्स so uh, cleanliness efforts in this ranking so i hope you are understanding the distinction now coming to this copper category which is arohi andhra pradesh krishna is the district and vijayawada is the urban local what now here we have this swachh sarvekshan gramin awards okay so this gramin is conducted by the minister of jal shakti and which department particularly so it is department of drinking water and sanitation okay so it has conducted this स्वच्छ सर्वेक्षण एंड टाइम नाउ फॉर द लार्जर स्टेट तेलंगाना हरियाणा एंड तमिलनाडु आर एट द टॉप मोस्ट पोजिशन स्मॉलर स्टेट वी हैव स्मॉल स्टेट एंड यूटीज वी हैव अंडमान एंड निकोबार दादर एंड नगर हवेली एंड दमन एंड दू एंड सिक्किम एट दी टॉप थ्री पोजिशन फॉर डिस्ट्रिक्ट वी हैव भिवानी फ्रॉम हरियाणा जगतियाल फ्रॉम तेलंगाना एंड निजामाबाद फ्रॉम तेलंगाना Okay, these three are the topmost districts as far as the Swachh Sarvekshan Gramin Awards are concerned. Now we have the Sujalam campaign run by the Ministry of Jal, Shak Jal Shakti for uh, uh, conservation of water. So here Sujalam one may we have Madhya Pradesh at the topmost position and Sujalam two point zero Karnataka is at the topmost position and remembering the topper would suffice here. Okay. Now. At last, we are at the last slide of this swatch survey, but not the last slide of this video. So please stay here, okay? Don't shut down the video because this is not the last. We have many more questions to discuss. Let's discuss this swatch that he saved at twenty twenty two. So Karnataka is at the top, then Bihar is at the second position, then we have the Lakshadweep at the third position. At least, कहीं पर तो Bihar अच्छी position पे है, okay? Now coming to the seventh question, small farmers, agri business consortium, and Bayer's Crop Science Limited have signed an MOU to form and promote fifty farmer producer organizations. Which country does the latter headquartered in? So you must have heard about this Bayer's Crop Science Limited a lot because it has been in news frequently. Now which country does it belong? So it belongs to Germany. a bit of a mathematical equation which i have drawn here if you plus this small farmer agri business consortium with the bayer's crop sign basic, basically if you synergize their operation then what we have we have uh, the empowering farmer producer organizations in india as a result of their amalgamation or collaboration you can say now guys it is your task to tell me that how many fpos does the government aim to establish in india this is your target do tell me and also you have to mention the year by which year does the government aim to establish a certain number of uh, fpos in it the next question is which bank has opened its analytical center of excellence in bangalore um, to progress in artificial intelligence and other emerging technologies so here guys karnataka bank is the right answer so you can easily remember it karnataka bank bangalore is the capital and bangalore mein hi this center of excellence is established so guys karnataka bank's headquartered uh, headquarters is in bangalore and your family bank across india is the tag this person is the md of this bank and the name of this person is your question so here i have put two big question marks only for The next question is, which has become the first platform to go live on the open network for digital commerce beta version in Bangalore? So again, Bangalore is again in the news. So basically, what what is the right answer here? The right answer is Paytm Mall. Now, guys, understand this point that related to this ONDC, we come across two types of news. First is either there would be a there would be an acquisition 
of stake in the ONDC or relinquishment of the stake. Okay, either a bank is buying the stake or it is selling the stake in ONDC. Okay, and another type of news is related to its launch. Okay, it's related to the onboarding of platforms on this platform. So here we have the Paytm Mall. Now this infographic which is behind me, it is telling you a basic structure of this ONDC. So what is going to do? Basically, it is going to accumulate all the sellers on this platform and buyers can also access the information on the platform they can order the products by using the ondc and then the delivery and everything will be ensured by the ondc which is uh, done by flipkart and amazon also okay you can understand it in that manner also on flipkart and amazon we do not have the buyers or the manufacturers of flipkart itself they are the different manufacturers okay so those manufacturers exhibit their products on Flipkart, we order the product and the delivery and everything is assured by the Flipkart itself. So similar would be the pattern of this ONDC as well. But, but remember, nothing has been given by the government itself because the government itself is working on the ONDC. Okay, so that should be there in your mind. However, this would be the basic framework of it. Coming to the last question, when is the International Coffee Day celebrated? So it is celebrated on October 1st. October 1st. Now, related to coffee, since your NABAD examination is coming up, we have four varieties of coffee uh, beans in the world. First is Robusta, then Excelsa, then Librica, then we have Arabica. Now, out of these four, uh, varieties robusta and arabica these two are the most famous uh, varieties or i should say widely used varieties of coffee beans so let's have a look at the major producers of these two coffee beans so here you can clearly see that robusta and arabica these countries are the major producers and india is also a part of it so india is very much into the production of robusta okay so you can clearly see India and China and the entire Southeast, nation, uh, Southeast Asia is conducive for the production of Robusta coffee beans. So that is the map which I have found. Okay. Now here we discussed about coffee. How can we leave tea behind? Tea would uh, not like it. So I have put the tea map of India on this slide. If you are a lover of tea or in a admirer of tea you can look at this map okay it is just for fun okay now here this video ends i hope you have liked the content provided by me if there is any kind of feedback or anything that you are feeling for you can mention it in the comment section below that should be restricted to the academic purpose only okay so on that note goodbye to all of you have a happy happy dashera and try to eliminate the is in yourself okay thank you so much